Welcome or welcome back to our channel. Today's video is all about food. In celebration of Veganuary, we're sharing some of our go-to hearty and delicious plant-based meals. And we'll also be talking about why we eat the way we do. Enjoy! Okay, so finally done with the morning routine and now I'm gonna make some breakfast. I thought of making some granola, which we absolutely love eating for breakfast. And normally when we turn the oven on, we also try to cook a little bit more or bake a little bit more just to not waste so much energy. So I'm gonna also make a carrot cake, which is one of our favorite cakes. So for the granola, it's actually super easy. We need oats, bananas, coconut oil, highly recommend to melt it, if not it becomes very clunky, and cinnamon. And that's basically it. You can use one or two bananas. I normally use two. If you use one, it just becomes more fine. If you use two, it becomes a bit more clunky and I like it like that. So I'm gonna use that. Don't use more than two bananas because if not, it becomes very soggy. It takes a really long time for the moist to disappear. And yeah, this is not nice. So. We have an old school oven. You see if it's on, looking through that hole. So the oven needs to be at 150 degrees Celsius. Not more than that, if not you burn the oats. Whilst the oven is heating up, I'm also gonna melt the coconut oil. I forgot to mention, but of course you can add anything to this granola or this oat. Nuts, seeds, dried fruit, whatever. I would just add it afterwards, not bake it with it. After you've melted the coconut oil, you mix it together with the banana. After you've mixed the coconut oil and the banana very well, you pour it into the granola. And then make sure that you stir it very well. Make sure that all oats are moist, that there's no dry oats anymore. After mixing it very thoroughly, you put it on an oven tray and then you can put it in the oven. Put it in the oven for around 45 minutes. Now the granola is in the oven, I'm gonna make the carrot cake. This is a carrot cake from Loving It Vegan and it's really, as mentioned before, one of the best cakes we have. It's super moist and I love the taste of it, so I'm gonna make it now. We don't have a grater, so we're using a peeler to peel all the carrots. Normally we blitz the flax seeds, but we don't have a good mixer here, so we're just gonna use some boiling water to make the flax mix. gonna go on a little walk yeah the morning started off a bit gray but now it's stunning beautiful. and it has snowed all the peaks are white we'll yeah. show you now so we're gonna go on a little walk we're taking our 
hot cocoa. <laughs> and we have herbal tea throughout the day, but we usually have one more milky warm drink throughout the day as well. And it's either a hot cocoa or a turmeric latte. And right now it's a hot cocoa. Here's how we make the, our hot cocoa in case you're interested. But one thing to know about hot cocoa that you may not know is that it's good to have it in the morning or after lunch at the latest because it does wake you up. It's like a form of coffee, a healthier form of coffee yeah it's more stable yeah. more stable yeah but it is a stimulant mm -hmm. so don't take it before bedtime even though you always feel like hot cocoa before bedtime <laughs> yeah. okay so we take our hot cocoa we're gonna walk see some mountains and we're gonna talk to you about our food habits deep deep stuff deep stuff Let's talk about food while trying not to fall down the mountain. I don't know why we're doing it like this, but let's just figure it out. It's dynamic, it's dynamic. Okay, anyway, we've been wanting to do this video or a video like this for a while because food is a really important thing in our life, right? Yeah. We love eating, we love cooking, <laughs> we love yummy food and we dedicate a lot of time to preparing nutritious meals for ourselves and we think it's totally possible and relatively easy to cook delicious, nutritive, vegan meals almost anywhere you are. So we thought of telling you a little bit about our diet and why we eat the way we do. Our diet is predominantly plant-based. And then the last thing we've been trying to incorporate is buying as much organic as possible. And limiting our ultra-processed food. Yes, for sure. Because that at a certain point went a bit in the wrong direction. It became a bit of a habit. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a laziness. Yeah, the more access to vegan products we get in the supermarket, the more we were like, ooh, vegan cheese. He's vegan mock meat yeah. and then we got a bit lazy with our cooking and we had to take a step back yeah but now we're doing really well yeah. cooking here has been so much fun for us the decision to go vegan is purely ethical yeah we want to cause as little suffering as possible with our diet and to have the least impact possible on the planet and being vegan is one of the easiest ways to do that and we don't find that we're missing out on a lot no by restricting our diet and even if we are it's fine. I can miss out on certain tastes if it means that I won't be harming other living beings. And we're also getting better and better at making delicious meals, which helps a lot, to be honest. It if, really does, yeah. If you want to become vegan and just take the meat out of your meals, eating becomes a bit of a boring exercise. But just cooking really well makes it just so much better. Yeah, you kind of have to change the mindset and start preparing more diverse meals, which is also good for your health in general to get a lot of different fruits and veggies in your diet. I've made it to the top and I'm gonna take a 360 view. Let's see if I can do this. Over there, you notice properly is the Picos de Europa, the highest mountain range in the area. And it's full of snow. That's why it blends a bit with the clouds. And if we continue turning, there you see the sea. All the blue end is the sea. We continue. And here's the view from our place where the mountain range continues and continues. And there's so much snow it continues all around. And then we just came up walking all through there to the reaching this point. So how was the journey for us? For me, it's quite different to you. Yeah. I grew up being vegetarian and I only started eating meat when I was a teenager because I wanted to fit in. <laughs> and I ate meat till my early 20s when I realized it really wasn't adding much to my life and I no longer needed to do something just because I wanted to fit in. So I promptly decided to cut it out. When I met you, I was 24 mm -hmm. and I was pescatarian, I think, at that point. Where 
or I wasn't having meat either. Yeah, you made fun of me. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely made fun of me. You you were one of those. <laughs> yeah, I was one of those. Yeah. Yeah. And then a few months later, you decided to try go vegetarian because you wanted to see how it would work out. I was really afraid because I thought he would get a lot of backlash from friends and family and that I would be blamed for him going vegetarian because they would think that I pushed it onto him, which by the way, I totally didn't. I never even tried to convince you. No, but you opened me to the idea. I knew already that it was a possibility, but I just had never pushed through. Yeah, and I, I cooked much more when we met. You didn't cook at all. I cooked really yummy food. Yeah, that And helped. I think it, yeah, it showed you that, that delicious food was possible. So um, Warner became vegetarian. I became vegetarian as well. We dropped the fish. And then for some years we were vegetarian. And then we tried to go vegan. And that fluctuated between vegan and vegetarian for a bit there. And now we've been vegan for the past couple of years. Yeah, the last five years? No. <laughs> last four years? It's not that long? Four years maybe. We do have a primarily plant-based diet. Yeah. And we always try to make sure that whatever we're consuming doesn't cause suffering or doesn't have a huge environmental f footprint footprint <laughs> I, I got it. I, didn't know. I was blank there I, I didn't know where you were going with that. yeah and now to be honest we're at a point in our lives that we don't think we're ever gonna go back to eating meat no. we just know too much about how the industry works about the suffering it causes and about its environmental impact and we are lucky enough that nowadays in our world and in our situation specifically cutting out meat is really easy yeah there's no need anymore to eat or drink animal products so, yeah, so to get all your nutrition in all your proteins in like there's so much plant-based stuff now that it's just not required anymore yeah so as long as we have that choice for us that's the choice we want to take yeah oh you're getting very very confident he used to be afraid of us a little bit hopefully some of the meals we prepare these days and show you look appealing enough for you to want to try them and if you like this type of recipes and videos let us know and we will make sure to sprinkle them a little bit more in the future because for us it is a huge part of our life it's lunchtime and i'm going to prepare a very easy meal very adaptable meal that i make anytime we need something cozy and warm or that we just need to get rid of leftovers and that is a curry of course there's a million and one ways to make curries but this is my go-to when i just want something simple that i don't have to think about that i don't need very specific ingredients ingredients for and this meal is perfect for today we haven't been able to do food shopping we haven't been able to plan our meals so we just have some leftover vegetables and our pantry ingredients and that's it we have to figure out food and this I know will be delicious no matter what I put in it and it's just easy enough that I can do it right now so what you need for the curry for this curry I always use a can of coconut milk a tin of canned tomatoes or in Spain tomate frito a little box of tomate frito or some tomato paste anything that's tomato-y and then the veggies and the spices that you want to include I don't normally put onion but I am going to add some onion today for the extra flavor and then I like to add colors of the rainbow so red green orange etc something I always try to add is a creamy vegetable that I would say is in the orange spectrum so either pumpkin butternut squash sweet potatoes whatever will add that sweetness and creaminess in today's case is a tiny super cute butternut squash from our local organic market then I also like to add lots of greens but we don't have that today so I'm going to be adding some peppers normally I would add red peppers because I like you know the element of red there but we don't have red peppers we have green peppers and that's perfectly fine and then for the leafy green component I'm gonna be adding the leaves of this cauliflower that we ate the other day and I really like doing this because so much food goes to waste just because we don't tend to eat certain parts of plants we don't see it done very often and therefore we don't think of it but these parts of plants that are often discarded contain a ton of nutrients many times more nutrients than the food itself that we do use and they're delicious they're edible there's no need for them to go to landfill basically so we try to use all parts of the fruits and veggies that we consume but specifically cauliflower leaves for example are really yummy and easy to prepare
prepare in different ways. One recipe I would totally recommend you trying is taking all the cauliflower leaves, putting them in the oven with a ton of garlic, cloves, some oil, some herbs, and then just letting them roast for a bit. And then you can blitz that into a very nice cauliflower soup. And it tastes like you're having cauliflower, but you're using the leafy greens of the cauliflower. Anyway, that's a long story to tell you that I'll be using the leafy greens of the cauliflower as the greens for this curry, even though normally I would also like to add some spinach or any other like kale, etc. Deep green leafy vegetable that we don't have right now. And then for some extra veggies and nutrition, I'm going to be adding some of this purple cabbage more at the end so it doesn't overcook and just adds a nice crunch to the whole mix. I think that's it. For spices, I always add curry powder. That's an easy one. I like adding some coriander and cumin powder if I have. I also like always adding some cinnamon. I think it just adds a very nice touch. And then you can play around with it. You can add more things. If you have garam masala, you can add a bit of garam masala. You can add some turmeric, which is super healthy, some pepper. I normally add some dried chilies to it because I don't normally have fresh chilies. And I think that is about it. But yeah, whilst I'm cooking, I'll probably remember more things and let you know. Whenever you have tomato paste, adding a bit of sugar cuts out the acidity. At this stage, I add some chili powder, a bit of turmeric, pepper, and salt, or to make it extra tasty, some veggie stock. Add the veggies that need a longer cook time. And then afterwards you can add the greens or the veggies that don't need to cook for that long. As vegans, you can totally get an adequate protein intake from a plant-based diet. But it is important to take into account the variety of food you're consuming. So whilst lentils and legumes, all different legumes have a lot of protein and so do rice and other cereals, they contain different amino acids, I think it is. <laughs> now I'm getting a bit too technical and I might say something stupid, but from my knowledge, they contain different amino acids that you should consume within the protein. If you're not careful about combining both legumes and grains, you might be missing some essential amino acids from the protein you're consuming. So by having both in the same day, you are getting a more complete protein intake. And therefore, it's just an easy thing to remember. Anytime you have a grain, have some sort of legume on the side or during the same day, and then you're guaranteeing yourself a better intake of protein. So normally when I make curry, I always add a bit of red lentils, but today I'm going to be adding chickpeas because we already have a batch of chickpeas that I just prepared before starting this video. It's here and we're gonna use them for tonight's meal as well. So I thought I might as well just use some chickpeas and I'm going to be reusing the water that I cooked the chickpeas in to make some quinoa as the grain. You could of course make rice, but I have quinoa, I thought why not make some quinoa. And there is another key element to our cooking. Because we're vegan, we eat a ton of legumes in the week, but cooking your own legumes can be really time consuming. And therefore a lot of people I think tend to go to supermarkets and buy canned products. But the reality is that those canned products are way less healthy. They have a lot of additives there that you shouldn't be consuming. And it's much, much more expensive if you're buying your tinned lentils, chickpeas, etc. So for us, it has really been a game changer to get this pressure cooker. If you get a good pressure cooker, you will reduce your cooking time of all legumes by a lot, to be honest. And it just makes things way easier, way faster. We love our pressure cooker. We use it all the time. So that's one thing I would really recommend. If you want to get into cooking more plant-based meals, a pressure cooker is really essential. And you will also save a ton on your gas bill or electricity bill, whatever medium you use to cook. To garnish, you can put some parsley on top or some lemon and it will be delicious. Okay, it's dinner time and 
I do not feel like cooking. However, even though we have leftovers from lunch, we're not gonna eat that. Therefore, I do have to make something for dinner, but I'm going to make something quick and simple and delicious to get it out of the way. And this is a recipe that I got from Instagram and I will put it in the description in case you wanna follow it. But it's mashed potatoes. I'm gonna have a hard time because here we don't have a mixer, so I have to mash them with a fork. But apart from that, it's fairly straightforward to make mashed potatoes. And then on top we put meat so braised cabbage that's the main yumminess of the meal and that's really easy you just have to cut the cabbage in big slices sear it in a pan and then once it's seared add garlic a lot of cut up garlic or minced garlic and some miso paste a bit of liquid cover it let it cook in the juices it's amazing and on top of that just for a crunchy extra element the recipe puts like um, crispy pinto beans I don't know what they're called, beans, but I'm going to put chickpeas and I'm going to just roast them quickly in the pan with some spices to have that crunchy, yummy, savory element on top. So that's it, really straightforward. If you want to see how the original recipe does it, I will put it in the description. Hey, dinner is served. You don't see it in the video, but this plate are gigantic. So we have some potato puree, the braised miso braised cabbage, the crispy chickpeas, and then I've put some vegan and Biolife feta because we love it and we had some leftovers. That's Warner's plate because it's much bigger. Dinner time! Breakfast is served and it has savory. This is some thing rye bread, healthy bread, <laughs> toast with Biolife feta cheese. This is delicious. I love it. Some... Oh my god, I cannot think of any words on that. <laughs> can tell it's the morning. Okay, buy a life better cheese. How can I not think? Wait, wait. <laughs> wait. I feel like I'm going crazy. Um, basil. Basil leaves, uh, some balsamic vinegar, salt and pepper. And then for sweet, we have persimmon, khaki in Spanish, with granola and the vegan yogurt, which is delicious. And of course, our two daily matchas. I'm gonna keep it simple for lunch and just make a quick rice bowl with some veggies and some alcochofas, which I forgot the name of in English. We also have this massive bag of pickled ginger, which you normally use for sushi, but it's delicious to actually put it over anything. So I'm gonna get started, prep it as quickly as I can. It's already really late, so it's a quarter to five. We are having lunch in Spanish time, and I hope to go out for a quick walk before it gets properly dark in an hour. So I'll try to make this quick. This is something we only learned recently, but for making delicious Asian salads, you use the ratio 3-3-1-1. And that means three spoons of soy sauce, three spoons of oil, one spoon of vinegar and one spoon of sugar and mixing that up on like a cucumber salad is really really delicious i highly recommend it Okay, it's evening now and time to make dinner. I'm going to be making some corn tortillas, which are store-bought, and we'll be filling them with texturized soy and also cauliflower and maybe some herbs. And that's it, keeping it simple. A little bit of lemon on top. It would be ideal to have lime, but we don't. So we're making do with what we have. Okay, for the texturized soy, for the texturized soy, I don't know why I struggle with that word. We have some of the texture right so itself Does it focus <laughs> no doesn't focus anyway 
there we go of the texturized soy itself and I put it to soak with some boiling water so that it would you know go soft then drain the water out and mix some spices I've put some chili powder some turmeric some cumin some garlic powder some salt I think that's it and now I'm going to quickly saute it in the pan with a little bit of oil a little bit of soy sauce and then I will add a bit of liquid so that it cooks as well let it sit for a bit and then continue preparing the rest so that's the texture I saw and that just kind of mimics meat if you want but for me it's not really about that it's just that it's very yummy and yeah I like to eat it the camera keeps on having issues with focusing on me so I'm sorry about that Thank you, baby. Looking forward to it? I'm so hungry. So it's a fairly simple dinner and the fillings, of course, vary depending on what we have. I would have loved some more bright greens. At least we have the herbs in the yogurt sauce that yeah. we've made, vegan yogurt. But yeah, this is with some lettuce, some cauliflower and the mock meat. I think it will be yummy. Yeah, I'm super excited. Enjoy. Enjoy. Here's your plate. It's lunchtime and today I'm going to make some vegan chili. You can call it chili, you can call it, I don't know, bean stew, <laughs> whatever you want. It's just chili inspired. And it's something that for us is a comfort food. It's really easy to make. You can adapt it according to what you have. It just takes a little bit of time if you don't have a pressure cooker because beans do take a while to cook. But apart from that, it's relatively straightforward. It's yummy, it's warming. We really like it. So what do you need? I always I like putting some garlic and some onion and some pepper, especially red pepper. I like the sweetness of red pepper. We have both that need to be used up. Then I always like adding a tomato element, like a tomato puree, also some diced tomatoes if you don't have any tomato sauce. And I always like adding an orange vegetable that adds creaminess and sweetness, like sweet potato, pumpkin, butternut squash, carrot, one of the four or a combination of them. We're also going to use a combination of sweet potato and butternut squash because we had a bit of both but not enough of either and then I also like to add some leafy greens and any other vegetable that I have laying around that I want to incorporate today it's going to be some purple cabbage that I will add more towards the end so it doesn't get overboiled and the spinach which will be the last thing that is added once everything has been boiled and cooked we will add the spinach only as a garnish to make it a bit fresh it cooks itself basically because the meal is so hot and that way you're not boiling away all the nutrients in the spinach. In my opinion the more colors the better also the heartier the sauce will be if you have a lot of veggies that have been cooked together with the spices that's just perfect. As for the spices I personally like adding some paprika powder, some cumin powder, some coriander powder, some chili powder for spice. You can also add fresh chilies and then some cinnamon. I love the addition of 
of cinnamon. I think it's a little extra touch that is just very special. And that's about it for the beans. Again, we use our pressure cooker. If you're soaking the beans for a day beforehand or minimum six hours beforehand, it really doesn't take that long to cook them. The beans have been soaking for 24 hours so that they cook really quickly. In today's chili, we're going to be using white beans because they're local from the area and it's what we have at the moment. And I'm going to be preparing the whole chili inside the same pressure cooker. You can of course pre-boil the beans, then make the sauce and add the beans to that. But I just don't see the point. I don't want to make more of a mess. If I make it all in one pot, it goes pretty quickly. I will say that when you let the chili sit, if you make a big portion and you have it for multiple days, the second day is gonna just be nicer. It's gonna taste really rich and creamy and it's gonna be delicious. So if you do cook it longer, the spices infuse better into the food and also the veggies give everything more taste. But even doing it quick, it's really, really delicious. Now that the lid is on, you make it boil at full fire till this comes up the two lines. Then you leave it there for a little bit in low fire. Okay, once it has been cooking for a little bit at the top, I turn off the fire and I let it just go all the way down because all the time the pressure and the heat it's still cooking and that way you're not wasting too much energy. And once it's all the way down, you can open it, add any veggies that you want to cook slightly but not a lot and try it to see if it's missing anything. Oop, it still has some some pressure in there so I'm gonna wait a second okay so when you pressure cook things the reality is that it doesn't cook down as much so whatever liquid you add kind of stays there so now I'm just going to add the purple cabbage boil it for a bit let some of the liquid evaporate to make it a bit creamier and then it's done just turned on the fire again and it instantly starts boiling because whilst it's under pressure even if the fire is not on it keeps all the heat so yeah I'm just gonna cook this down a bit so it's less liquidy. Okay now that the chili has been boiling for a little bit you can see it's thickened up and it looks really really good and ready to serve. I put some spinach in our bowls. I don't want to include it in the chili because first this is a really big quantity that will last us a couple of days and if I put the spinach then tomorrow's serving will be all wilted and also it doesn't really need to cook much so by putting the hot chili on top that is more than enough. Now we don't really have a ladle yet. <laughs> We're missing a lot of essential equipment in this kitchen so it's gonna be a bit painful to see me serve our lunch with a spoon but that's how we do things around here. Okay, lunch is finally ready. It's best to garnish it with some fresh cilantro or you can even add coriander, it depends what you want. But we don't have either because our little plants are too small. <laughs> so we always add lemon. You can also add lime. It just needs an acidity element and lime is here not easy to come by. And then we always eat our chili with nachos. It's a guilty pleasure. <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> So we always have them as a backup in the pantry in case we're gonna have some chili. I think that's it. Yeah, caprovecce. Caprovecce, baby. Let's talk groceries. Because we live in the middle of the mountains, we always have to take the car if we want to buy any fruits or veg or any produce. So in the trunk, we have a ton of bags to do our groceries, no matter where we go. And also, and very importantly, a ton of produce bags. These are smaller bags for all the fruit and veg or legumes, anything that we can find in bulk. We keep all these little bags with us and we try to use them as much as possible. We try to buy from local shops as much as possible. Our favorite place is an organic farm that is about 40 minutes away, although we have a pickup point half an hour away. However, in winter, their produce is very limited, if not non-existent, so we have to be flexible. We also shop from a local fruit and veg shop that even though it's not organic, she does have some local produce once in a while, and she's just a lovely person and from a local village. And then whatever we can not get there we ultimately have to get in big supermarkets unfortunately there's no bulk stores near us the closest ones are like an hour away and they also don't have a lot on offer but we do go once in a while to get loose leaf tea and some grains and legumes if we're passing by our pantry is still in a little bit of shambles it's a very temporary and disorganized situation but we live around 30 minutes from the closest fruit and veg shop and we live around 30 minutes from the closest supermarket 
it, which doesn't have much. So the bigger supermarket is actually even further. Therefore, we try to get out of the house for grocery shopping only every couple of weeks. And we try to then buy everything in one go, which is most of the time a really long undertaking. It takes us the whole day, but uh, then we have everything. And also because we're in the mountains and we can get snowed in for more than a month, we always try to have at least enough dry goods for our more than a month. If we do go to the supermarket for staple foods, we try to get everything on offer. So when something is on offer, we, we buy a lot in big quantities. Our milk, for example, this is only less than half of what we had. We had so many boxes of milk and it's slowly over time we're using it. And then when there's a new offer, we'll buy everything up again. When it comes to yogurt, we also only buy that on offer because it's just very expensive. And the cheese are like more luxury items. We only buy once every now and and then in the future our hope is to change this whole pantry situation around and not have this set up as we have it now we already made a design for this lower floor and we're gonna have a lot of storage racks over full length of this ground floor just to be able to store everything also we're gonna buy all our legumes and all our grains in big bulk bags of 10 kilo plus bags so we can just keep it stored here because it's a very cool and dry area here and in that way we can get it from organic produces directly which will save on cost and it's just gonna be much better for us and we'll be supporting the right people we'll also have a big fridge and freezer set up here downstairs that can run on solar all year round that can store all our perishables because at the moment we just have to leave it out in the coldest area of this house because the fridge is not working <laughs> hope you enjoy this little pantry tour Pancake time. Yes, we're gonna make a very simple, typically Dutch dinner. And I really feel like it. Yeah, me too, actually. <laughs> we call it pancakes, but Americans will immediately think they're not pancakes because they're uh, not yeah. American pancakes. They're more like crepes, but they're also not like crepes because they're not as thin. They're not so. as thin and they're also not filled with sweet stuff. It's mostly savory or savory sweet combos. In the Netherlands, we actually have pancakes that are filled. You bake them already filled with things. For example, example a very common combination is like bacon and apple yeah with some syrup on top yeah. and they're typically when you go out to eat them which is what you do no you make them a lot yourself but we yeah. have pancake restaurants yeah, you have pancake restaurants and it this sounds crazy but they're like this i yeah, kid you not they're, they're so big they're humongous yeah it's a full meal like it's a and, proper dinner yeah, yeah and it's normally for dinner it's a completely different concept of a pancake yeah. but it's really nice it's easy and once in a while it's just what you we need. love it and the ones we're gonna make today are inspired by one of our first fights <laughs> <laughs> they're inspired <laughs> by one of our first fights one of our most memorable dates yeah true years ago this must have been what nine years ago eight, eight and, and a half, half. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were living in the netherlands both of us in different towns and we were going through a discussion and warner came to surprise me to try make peace with a little <laughs> yeah. note i will always remember <laughs> this this is tmi but i'm gonna tell you anyway with a little note that had two stick figures drawn on it which were supposed to represent us yeah. and it said you are amazing <laughs> i remember the word amazing because i really loved it and you had a little hand-picked flower from the side of the road with it and our tradition when we would get into these funks or like a fight to try and make up because we were not living together was to go out and just aimlessly walk or drive, drive. We didn't have a car back then. You would borrow your dad's car or mom's car and come pick me up and we would drive randomly and just spend time together talking. And it was like a special moment of connection. Yeah. So that day he came with his little card and we just started driving. I remember at the beginning I was like crying and upset. And by the end of the night we had made, made peace. Made peace. <laughs> and basically in our aimless driving, we ended up in a pancake restaurant for dinner. And we were vegetarian at the time, or at least I was. I don't know if you were but they didn't have a lot of options so we went for one of the options they had which was banana and cheese yeah. thinking it sounded pretty weird and it's one of the best combinations ever it's so good <laughs> so now we make it with vegan cheese <laughs> good flip where you would normally put ingredients on the non-cooked side and turn it over and cook that but with the vegan cheese that's not a possibility so we adapt. 
And that's what we're gonna make tonight, banana cheese pancakes. Yeah, so I highly recommend the pancake options of banana cheese. Apple cheese. Apple cheese, mango and chocolate. Oh, mango and black chocolate, but that's more like a crepe crepe. Make yeah. it like a normal crepe, that's yeah. delicious. And then the last one for me, I really love mushrooms and cheese. Yeah, mushrooms and cheese that's is also very good. good. And yeah. you can have all kinds of savory options. So we're gonna do a banana and cheese today. Yeah, we're gonna we're, make a lot. We're very happy because we have some epic mature bio life cheese. This is a treat for us. We don't tend to buy these vegan cheeses very often. I mean, they are processed first, but also they tend to be a bit pricey. But I think it's... This one is really good. Cheese has yeah. gotten way better. Vegan cheese has gotten way better over yeah. the last few sure. years. And I particularly really like this one. Like just smelling it, I'm, oh, I want to eat. And for the batter, you're going to follow a recipe that yeah, we'll no link records. in the description. Yeah. The websites we tend to follow for vegan recipes and vegan basics as well are Nora Cooks and Minimalist Baker. Loving it vegan. There are a couple more. They have really good basics like pancakes, even how to make your own vegan butter. It's just substitutes. It, they have really good recipes like that and also for delicious special meals if you want to and make an effort. And cookies. Yeah. The only thing I want to note, and I think we say it before as well in the video, but with all these American websites, at least for us, we have to cut the sugar measurements in at least half. in half. At least and, in half. And more. Normally we use one third of the sugar measurement recommended. And also for the savory dishes, we also cut the salt. Just take that into account, but they're amazing websites that have really good simple recipes to follow. Almost, almost. <laughs> so we've finally done. This is the only con of making pancakes that it takes forever if you only have one pan. Three hours later. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm so hungry. It's actually 10.30 <laughs> in the evening and we're gonna eat now, so. Yeah, very Spanish. Very Spanish. Mm. Enjoy. Caproveche. Gracias. They're so good. Yeah? Mm. Mm. We could eat them in a more civilized way, but we don't want to. <laughs> good night.